Hi guys, I'm Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art and today I'm going to be talking about a sketchbook painting I did using only flathead paintbrushes and gouache. At the very end I did a few little details with a micron pen but we will get to that. If you have followed my work for a while, you know that this painting is very different than what my typical style is. I typically work pretty realistic and I just play with color a little bit. But for the most part, my, my paintings are very realistic and dimensional. This painting tends to lean more towards impressionism, pointillism, with a dash of, dare I say it, Minecraft thrown in because it's almost pixelated. Um... My kids have gotten really into Minecraft, and so that's what they thought this picture looked like because of all the square details. So this picture came about because I was experimenting with a new gouache palette, and I needed to do a few paintings with it and get really comfortable with it in order to be able to review it. And I had done a couple paintings before this one, and then... I wanted to change things up and I was trying to get an idea of what I wanted to paint. And I was looking for some paintbrushes to use and I realized that I have a ton of flathead paintbrushes in various sizes um, that I don't use very often. Some of them have never been used and I've had them for a long time. That's because I don't use flathead headed paintbrushes typically when I work in gouache or in watercolor. And then with gouache, I found that I used Filbert, the rounded flat brushes, um, more often when I worked with gouache because I found it was easier to blend and get soft edges with the Filbert shaped. So my flathead paint brushes pretty much got ignored, and so I wanted to use those. And then I was kind of thinking of like how I wanted to use them and what I wanted to paint. And I thought back to Impressionism. I have loved Impressionistic paintings all of my life and one of them came to mind and it's a painting by George Seurat called Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. I might have slaughtered that. I'm not very good with French but it's it's this painting that's done in pointillism. That's what Seurat was famous for and I remember learning about it in elementary school before doing a, a painting using pointillism and so I was thinking of that picture and so, but I wanted to show off the, the flat-headed paintbrushes. And so I decided I was going to do more of like a, a squared off pointillism or like rectangularism. It's not cubism. That's a totally different style of painting. But I wanted to kind of lean into that and kind of combine the two. And I have to say it was, it was kind of scary doing this piece because it was so out of my comfort zone. But it was a lot of fun trying to think differently and, and figure out problems I was facing as I was working because it was all new territory for me. So kind of the guidelines that I used for myself for this painting was that I had to use flat-headed flat -headed paintbrushes. I could use any size of them that I wanted, but they had to be flat-ended. And I could do an underpainting and get the base coat of color down but after that everything had to be these kind of visible brush strokes that were kind of like a dab slash stroke motion and I couldn't like blend like I normally would with like with paints I had to blend by how I layered the color not by how I manipulated the paint if that makes sense so I did the base painting for the sky and then started coming in with these kind of dab motions and it was going along pretty good but then it felt very cold and wintry granted it was just a blue and white landscape so it would read very wintry but I, I decided I needed to warm up the sky just a little bit so I started going in with some like minty colors and had, that had a little bit more of a green undertone to help warm up the sky so it didn't read quite so cold because I wanted this to be a fall um, scene with a tree and yellows and reds and so I, I didn't want it to read too cold and then I decided to try on the grass to just go straight in with this like dab motion instead of doing an underpainting and I have mixed feelings about how that went 
I think it would have been a lot easier to achieve the look I was going for with an underpainting because I had to fight the white of the paper quite a bit for the grass. And when I say I was fighting the white of the paper, it just means I had to take a lot more time to kind of cover up the white of the paper. Unless you're working with watercolor, most artists don't like to work with a, on a straight white canvas or piece of paper. They like it to be toned, whether they're the one toning it or they buy it toned. Because if you have some kind of mid-value, it's easier to get the, the value variation that you need without going to extreme one way or the other. So I survived, but it, it just made it a lot more work. And you can see I come back to the grass quite a bit. I started doing the tree similar to how I started the grass. And I quickly decided it was better to do an underpainting on the tree as well. Especially because it has such small details that I knew it was going to be hard to do kind of the stab motion and get those small branches in. And so having an underpainting is just just helped that process move along. Something I realized I, pretty early on in this painting process and that I had to put a really strong conscious effort in while I was painting the piece was to bounce the colors around in the piece. So colors that I found in the sky needed to be bounced into the grass and the tree trunk. Colors in the grass need to be in the tree trunk and in the sky and just kind of make sure those colors are showing up in more than one place. That way, it looks like everything kind of belongs together. There's harmony in the picture. Because when I didn't bounce the color around, it, it looked really childish. It looked like a kid's typical drawing of a tree and a sky and green grass. And they just used one color for the tree and one color for the grass and one color for the sky. And it looks flat and uninteresting and like those pieces don't belong together. And so when I bounced the color around and kind of played with that, I found it helped bring it together. And I had to do this throughout the whole painting process. So I, I did some now, and then you'll see me do it later where I add purples to the grass and things like that, because it just, just to get that harmony going in the piece. So something I realized when I was working on this painting was that I needed to stagger my brush strokes. If I laid down the color too systematically, so in like a straight line or like equal spacing between the brush strokes, it tended to lean more towards a, looking like a mosaic instead of an impressionistic painting. And I didn't want those gaps and I didn't want it to look too rigid or uniform and so I made sure I staggered my brush strokes and layered them on top of each other and that created a more visual interest and it made it kind of blend and harmonize. So you can see here in the background branches and tree trunks that I'm blocking in that I kind of equally spaced the little brown strokes that I was doing to block in those shapes. And since they're equally spaced, they look very flat and it gives it almost a mosaic look versus a painting look. And so I had to do a lot more layers over the top of this to kind of help it all blend together and become one branch to have a more paint-like feel versus a mosaic tile feel to the, the piece. So for this painting, I wanted the tree to kind of be the main focus, but I wanted it to really give fall vibes. And so in the background behind the tree, I wanted it to have some bushes and branches and trees that had different colors of leaves than what our main tree will have. And so I started adding some yellows to start blocking in the shapes of the leaves that were hanging on those branches. I also used some greens and I also pulled some yellows into the grass, partly to help harmonize the painting, but also I wanted it to look like the sunlight was shining on the grass to give more contrast between the area of the grass that was in shadow. And so I pulled some of those yellows down there as well to just help build up that interest. Now we're starting to reach the stage in the painting where I was beginning to worry about how this was going to look at the end. 
I I didn't mind it all the way up until I started adding those background branches and bushes and stuff. And then when I started adding them, I was really worried that I had ruined the picture or I had made it too busy and it wasn't going to come together. But years of experience of painting has taught me that every painting has an ugly stage and sometimes it can look better before you started that ugly stage. But if you keep at it and keep pushing through it, usually you will improve the piece. And so if you're working on a picture and it's starting to look worse than it did, keep the faith, keep working at it, keep trying, and eventually it should improve. So something I hear a lot from art students and beginners is, quote, they're afraid to overwork their painting. And so they'll get to a point and then they stop and it's not finished. And they say, I'm afraid to overwork it, so I don't know what to do. Or they've hit an ugly layer and they don't like it and they're frozen and they don't know what to do next. Well, to say you don't overwork it, to quote Inga Omentoya from The Princess Bride, I don't think that means what you think it means. When people that are painting say that, they usually are saying they're, one, afraid to keep going because they don't want to mess up what they're really proud of, even though it's not complete. Or two, they don't like it and they don't know how to fix it or progress from it. And so you see a lot of artists that have like half finished paintings that they never come back to because they don't know what to do next. Or they throw them away because they don't like how it's progressing because they've hit an ugly stage. I think that's kind of a waste. I can understand taking a break from a painting and then coming back with fresh eyes so that you can better work at it. But to quit on a piece altogether, I think is a waste of time. And And quitting on something because you've hit an ugly stage and just throwing it away is a waste of materials. The worst case scenario, if you keep working at it, is that you still don't like it, but you've learned. You can use it as an opportunity to learn from. So I've had some paintings that I haven't loved, but I kept at them and I learned new skills and I learned what to do and what not to do on my next painting. And I used it as an opportunity and I didn't feel like that piece was a waste because of that. But I I couldn't allow myself to be paralyzed by fear. Overworking your paper, your painting only really exists in the sense of one you want to keep a loose kind of impressionistic look and you don't want to refine the details too much so I can understand creating more detail in in that sense the other way I can understand it is in watercolor or in something like a colored pencil or pastels because with watercolor if you overwork your picture That usually means that you have done layers of paint and you've activated the paint underneath it and it's kind of made a muddy mess or you've made a hole in your paper because you've scrubbed too hard. Those types of things in the sense of overworking your picture. In the sense of um, colored pencils or soft pastels, that really usually refers to filling in the tooth of your paper and so your paper can't accept any more layers. And so you're kind of stuck where you're at and there's not much more you can do. But when you're working with an opaque medium like acrylic paints or oil paints or even gouache, even though gouache has similarities to watercolor, you can still cover up your mistakes and keep going on it and seeing how far you can push it. So don't give up if you've hit an ugly stage. Keep trying because that's how you're going to improve as an artist. That's where you're going to learn That's where you're going to reach your art goals by kind of pushing past past your comfort zone and trying.
While I was painting this piece, I decided I wanted some sun rays peeking out the right hand side of the piece. So you can see that I've started to add kind of some like light highlights coming in at an angle that hit the tree and the grass and are giving some highlights. That's because I wanted some sun rays peeking through. It was a challenge to make them show up because one, the background behind where those sun rays are is yellow. So I had to get my values correct to help them show up. And then it was hard to kind of make them look like sun rays, only being able to do this one type of stroke. So I had to get creative with how I was layering it, how transparent. Um, I had to depend more on whites than I'm used to. But it was a really fun challenge in like trying to think through how this would work. I think one of my favorite things about doing this painting wasn't necessarily the end result, even though I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. What I loved about this was that it pushed myself to think creatively. It, I, had, I couldn't default to my normal painting style, my normal painting method. I had to think the whole process. It reminded me of when I was first learning how to paint with watercolor, and I had to focus so much on what I was doing because it was all new. And that's what this did to me is since this was an all new style, I had to really focus and problem solve um, things that were coming up and how to change and adjust my technique to meet what I needed it to look like in the end. I think sometimes as artists, especially like when you're, first starting out and you're a hobby artist, it's really tempting to just buy new supplies, especially when you're kind of feeling in a rut. Buying a new new paints or trying a new medium or something like that. And that's great. I definitely like trying new mediums and kind of pushing myself out of my comfort zone. But I think sometimes we forget that there's a lot of different ways that we can use the mediums and the art supplies that we have. Whether it's trying to paint with new techniques and pushing ourselves that way or trying to paint in a different style than what we normally work in. And when we do that, it pushes us out of our comfort zone and it makes us think and problem solve. And those are the moments that really help us learn and grow as artists. There's definitely techniques that I've learned doing this painting that I will be applying to future paintings that I do. And everything's a learning opportunity. That's why sketchbook work is so great because it's an opportunity for you to play and experiment with new techniques in a safe spot and you can take what you've learned from there and apply it to your your big pieces. So I got to about this point in the painting and I realized I wanted to do a few more details that I couldn't do with any of the brushes I had and so I grabbed a micron pen and I started doing details over the top and I just did dash lines I didn't do any like solid lines they were all dash lines and there's just a few of them but I think they really helped kind of reinforce some of the lines and that's the nice thing about gouache is that you can do um, line work over the top of what you painted really easily because of the matte finish but here is the finished painting and I'm really proud of how it turned out and I can't wait to experiment with this style of painting in the future if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of what I create, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Have a fantastic day and I will see you next time.